Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Sherwood. Y'all, glad y'all here. Great time of worship tonight. Um, I got a board working. I, I, a couple weeks ago, I, I was here, so whenever I'm here, we're doing on the work of the Holy Spirit on, on Wednesday night. And so, I just I just want to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit. Obviously, on Sunday morning, uh, you're talking a little bit about how important it is to hear hear from God. And how many knows it's important to hear from God? <clears throat> With the craziness going on in the world today, of course, it's always crazy out there, but it's crazier um, right now. And to and you, and, and you can't even just go on what you know what people just think. I mean, it's it's it's, it's, it's free, I guess, to think. So you can you can do that, but you know you want to make sure you you know what's uh, what's going on in the earth today. So that's important. And the best way we can do that is. Um, is, is through the Holy Spirit. He's the one that re- reminds us of all, all things and bring it back. So I'm, I'm going to continue to teach on that a little bit. And so I got the notes up there if you're here. This is your first time here on Wednesday night. We kind of, i like to slow down a little bit and, and teach you some things and give you some notes so we have it. So um, I, I'm going to talk about the work of the Holy Spirit a little bit, about what he does, about who he is. We've been talking about who he is and what he does. So I think it's very important. Most people, even Christians you know, are... Um, Need I say, afraid of the Holy Spirit? You know, if, if he, uh, in, in, in any way. But anyway, so let's let's just let's just learn. Um, so I'm in John 16 and 8. John 16 and 8, uh, which says one of these. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. When 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 who can come? Whenever who comes? Whenever the Holy Spirit comes. And this is Jesus talking because he's. He's getting ready to, 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 to leave. He's getting ready to, to leave where he's at. You, you have to understand that one, one of the names, I'm not going to go through the names of the Holy Spirit um, tonight, but, but one, of the, one of the compound names of the Holy Spirit, you know, it's like we've got the names of God. We, we've gone over those. Uh, but one of the names that describes the Holy Spirit is the comforter, is the comforter. And that word comforter there, I didn't bring my notes up here on, on that. I don't want to teach that, but it's kind of just hit me. Um, it, it, it breaks down. It literally means um, it, it, it's, it's the paraclete or the paracletos, the, the, another comforter or another helper. And, um, and, and, and another helper, we'll get to the scripture in a minute on that, but he says, I will bring you another helper and, and, and he will help you in all things. He will, he will be with you in all things. And, and that word helper there, which is, um, which is comforter, uh, is is a word that during those during those days, the um, the disciples knew very well, and that's who he was talking to. He was talking to the disciples, because if you had to go to trial, if you were um, uh, arrested for something or accused of something, you had to go to trial. Then, other than having uh, attorneys that you had to go and pay for, then you would find a couple of friends that you knew. That and, and knew you, and they would go before or go to court and go before the judge with you, and and you were trying to pick friends that that knew how to def- not only wanted to defend you but knew how to defend you, and and they were come and, and they were and literally in the Greek they were called parakletos. They were called the parakletos. They were your, they were your friends. They were, they were there, and what they would do they would defend you before the judge. And they will be with you every step of the way. They will, they will tell things you need to know. They will, you know, what, the pitfalls to watch out if you didn't obviously know the judicial system of the day and all these different things. And, and so that's what the paracletos would be, your, your helper, your comforter. That's who he was to them. So when Jesus said this, he said this to a group and he says, uh, it, is, it is beneficial for you. To, this is in John 14. He said, it, it is beneficial for me that I go, for you that I go away. But when I leave, I will send to you another comforter. Um, and the reason why I said another comforter, because Jesus was a paracletos to them. Jesus was the one that was always with them. Whatever they needed, Jesus was there. If they needed defending, they were there. If they didn't know what to do, Jesus was there. And so he, that, that's why he, he was the Messiah to them. He was their Lord. He was, he, he was, they, they knew he came from God. They believed it at that point. But, but he was always there, and he was there with them in the physical realm. And so now for him to tell them that I'm leaving, can you imagine having somebody with you? You're part of the 12, okay, you and, you and 11 others. Y'all, y'all part of this group, and, everywhere, and you were, you were, you were following this, 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 per, this, this person, and this, in this case was Jesus, and, and whatever you need, he's always there. 
If you get in trouble, he gets you out of trouble. If you don't know what decisions to make, he, he helps you make the right decisions. When you don't know what to say, he tells you what to say. When you forget things, he brings back to your remembrance what you, what you have forgotten. Now, 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 he was literally, he was physically, literally that to every one of them. Okay, that's fair. He, so he was a paracletos to them. He was a comforter to them. He was a, he was a helper to them. And that's why they stayed with him and he was there. So now he's leaving. And so when he's leaving, obviously he's going to the cross. He's going to suffer and die. He's going to go to heaven. And so, but he says, I won't leave you comfortless. I won't leave you paracletos -less. Okay. Uh, he says, and, and so I will send another comforter, which is Holy Spirit. And, and obviously the, the, the paraphrase there is, I was with you, but he shall be in you. Okay. And so he's with you. And so now we have to understand that. First of all, to understand anything else, understand that about the Holy Spirit. Everything that Jesus was to them physically, the Holy Spirit is them spiritually. But everything that Jesus did physically with them for three and a half years worth of ministry, that's what the Holy Spirit is to hear. And, and the disciples, they were, that is why they waited. This is not our notes. We'll get to it in a second. That is why, as, as um, Pastor Ryan was reading a while ago, but in, in Acts 2, Acts 1 and 8, um, and, or Acts, the whole, uh, most of the chapter number 1, he told them to, to not leave until you receive the promise of the Father. The Father. What was the promise of the Father? Well, they, they lost their paracletos. When Jesus suffered and died, not only did they thought he was the Messiah and, you know, they, they thought they were going to over, overthrow Rome and there was so much that they thought was going to happen. How many knows there's so many things that we think God's going to do something a certain way and when it don't go to a certain way, we think it's over. <laughs> but it's not over. It's just that God's going to do it his way. Okay? And so... Uh, so, so that, that happened. And so, so then they, so, but then when it don't happen, you find yourself in a tough spot, but you really trusted what, what, what they, as they did, trusting what the Lord was saying, you begin to, re, you begin to try to remember everything he said. I don't know if you ever had a mentor in your life or somebody that, you know, obviously made a big impact in your life and maybe you lost them, whether through death or moved away or, or lost contact with them. And if they're not there with you, you at least, all, and, and you're in a time that you really need them. And if you can't get in contact with them for whatever reason, you then try to stop and try to remember everything they said. Okay. And so that's kind of what they were. And so they remember, and then they said, well, he said he's going to send us another heifer. I mean, they know he died. They saw him suffer. They saw him die. They saw him throw in the tomb. They were there when he, when he, when he ascended up in heaven. They know he's gone. But he says, I'm going, to bring, I'm going to send you another comforter. And they waited on that comforter. They waited on the Holy Spirit. And, and that's why they went up to the, that's why they didn't leave Jerusalem. That's why they, they stayed right there until he showed up. And then when he showed up uh, on, on, that, on that Pentecost day, then they, they realized now, okay, now we can leave and go to the four corners of the earth and do everything that he's equipped us to do. Because he will not leave us comforters. If we need help, he'll be our helper. If we need to know what to do, he'll tell us what to do. If we need answers, he'll give us answers. If we need directions, he'll give us directions. If we need strength, he'll give us strength. If he needs peace, he'll just give us peace. See, Jesus was all those things in the physical, and now we're having the spiritual. Wouldn't it be awesome if we could lock into that? Okay, you got to have that kind of faith in the Holy Spirit, and so, so he's here. So anyway... Uh, that was free. That was not even, that was number zero. Now let's get to number one. <laughs> so with that in mind, so now that he's here, what does he do to all of us? Well, he convicts the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Um, without the special work of the Holy Spirit, people would not be deeply convinced of their sinfulness. That's what conviction is. Remember, conviction, conviction is to convince, okay? And it's the Holy Spirit that convinces um, and and, and with, without the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, people in their sins are like us, uh, would, would not know God's righteousness or his coming judgment. Therefore, in communicating the word of God to others, how to com communicate the word of God to others. That's why even right now with everything going on in Israel, you know, we got, you got, you got all these players involved. Um, just kind of throw this of understanding this, this paragraph right here without the special work of the Holy Spirit people would not be deeply convinced of their sinfulness so why is it when people are sinning in the world especially here in America all over the world is completely off of what their understanding of what 
of what holiness is or what being obedient to God is, and they're just, they're in their sin and they love their sin, well, who's going to convince them that? Well, we're preachers, we're going to preach it. Yeah, but without the moving of the Holy Spirit, they'll never get it. Come on, such for some of us. I mean, I was raised in church. I'm like, oh, get them. <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> then I realized, oh, wait a minute, he's talking to me. <laughs> um, anyway, but he, 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 without the special work of the Holy Spirit, people would be deeply, people would not be, that's, that's the key phrase, would not be deeply convinced of their sinfulness. I mean, know that the world, what the world needs today is a move of the Holy Spirit. Just do it, God. Regardless of what, what our belief system thinks about the Holy Spirit, whatever, there's not a man alive never have been that has Holy Spirit figured out. <laughs> and there have been entire denominations and movement built on the fact that this is who he is. <laughs> okay. And this is sure as you think it is. He's going to come in and blow our, blow our minds. Okay? You can't, but like, I heard a preacher Sunday preach about being in a box. Well, who it was, but. I signed up for his, uh, for his ministry team and everything else. So maybe y'all should too. They've been donated to his ministry. So maybe y'all need to do that too. Anyway. <laughs> I forgot what I was. I got to quit doing that. I'm getting old. I can't remember stuff like that anymore. You know, wait a minute. Anyway, anyhow, I have no idea. I wish I could remember why I did that. But without the special word of the Holy Spirit, anyway, they're convinced of their sinfulness. Um, it, but but we, need, we, need a, we need a move of the Holy Spirit of God. Oh, I know it was. We, talking about re religious order. That, we, we think we got the Holy Spirit figured out, but really, to be honest with you, all we do is we have put ourselves in a box. And some denominations are in bigger boxes than others, but guess what? It's still a box. It's still a box. It's still a container. It's still in there. And the devil is not afraid of us if our Holy Spirit is in a container, is in a box. It's when we turn him loose. He is without limits. I said he is without limits. I mean, man cannot catch it with light. Why? Because she's going and you'll never catch up with her. You'll, you'll, never, get, you'll never get to it. The, the, the universe is, is, has, is expanded and is continuing to expand. We'll never figure it out. We have no problem with the fact that we'll never ever figure out the, the, the vastness of, of the universe that is out there. And so we, we know a lot about it but we don't have it figured out. We know a lot about the Holy Spirit, but we don't have him figured out. That was good. You just don't. And we lay a stake, and we go underneath our flag, other than, and we separate, and we denominationalize ourselves over the fact that this one's got them figured out he does this, and this one over here, whoa, they think he does this. And I go, man, calm down. <laughs> he, he, we, we don't have him figured out. And that's, um, so anyway, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. And, and, but what we do know is, just based on this one little paragraph here that I wrote here, that, that the work of the Holy Spirit will not be deeply, we will not be deeply convinced of our sinfulness, but the Holy Spirit can move in such a powerful way that people who got up this morning and in, live in their sins and love their sins and then wake up tomorrow and realize, I don't want to be this way anymore. <clears throat> can he do it? You better believe he can do it. And who's the best, who, who are the best testaments of it? They're sitting in this house right now. Come on, we loved our sin. Oh, don't get old. Oh, there you go. Now, don't get in that holy box, that, uh, that you know, holy than thou box. Come on, we know it was it was fun. We enjoyed. We dressed up for it. <laughs> we washed our cars, man. Got them shined up. Picked out the clothes. The whole nine yards went out there, and then one day it was like, you know what? What happened? Holy Spirit, man. 
He convicted you. Convicted? Yeah, he convinced that sin will take you farther you want to go, make you stay long you want to be there, and cost you a lot more than you're willing to pay. <laughs> what happened? The alcohol still tastes the same. The girls were just as pretty. The cars went just as fast. The Holy Spirit moved. Oh, hallelujah. And he's moving, and he's going to continue moving. That's what's it. So when we say we need a revival, we need God to do something about what? Holy Spirit, we just need you to move and do what you do. Anyway, stay on that for a minute. But God's righteousness. He said he convicts us of God's righteousness, what is right, or the coming judgment. I want us to, we really have to understand about the coming judgment of God. And whenever you hear, let me just take, take a minute on this. We'll get into it a little bit later in a couple of weeks. I'm still watching this, this stuff. You take, if you, if you don't know, Ezekiel 38 and 39 is the battle of Gog and Magog. How many has ever heard of the term, the battle of Gog and Magog? Okay, and those of your hand, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a battle. It's, it's not the, that's not the battle of Armageddon. That's when Antichrist is involved. and it's, it, that's, that's the end. We, we know the battle of Armageddon, that's, that's the end. The millennial reign is getting ready to start. Jesus is coming back and set up. The battle of Gog and Magog, is, there's some players involved. This is, this is a battle that's going to take place over Israel. I mean, not over Israel, but over Israel themselves, the land. And, um, and, and, and the players thereof in that is, is going to be Russia, which Russia has troops right now in Syria. They said they're there for keep peace, but they're there. They're not being reported, but they're there. So Russia's involved. I found out today that Turkey, who's involved, when you go through and read Ezekiel 38 and 39, that Turkey is now involved with his Hezbollah, helping keeping them, um, which was, we all caught up with Hamas, because they're over there in Gaza, but Hezbollah is on the, is on the, other, is on the other side, on the uh, Golden Heights, on the other side, the Syria side. Turkey, the what, reason why that's important, called Turkey is mentioned in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Um, Persia, well, what's Persia? Persia is modern-day Iran. If you go over to Iran, you ask the Iranian, true Iranian, or you Iranian, they say, no, we're Persian. The West is the only one that calls them, that, that, that related them as that. So, so they're, they're, they're involved with it. And, of course, um, li, uh, well, let's just stop there. And, and, of course, Israel. So my point, my only point is bringing that up, just, just get your curiosity up, is that, so some people say, if you, if you don't know about the coming judgment or exactly what God is on in the world today, we don't know if this is the battle of Gog and Magog or not. Well, how are we going to know? And does it matter? Well, how are we going to know? Well, I believe if we stay close to the Holy Spirit, he will, he will show us. He'll begin to enlighten things to us. It, don't, don't, don't be getting it from CNN and Fox. You can listen to them, but I mean, swallow the meat and spit out the bones. Come on, guys. We eat fish around here, so you know how to eat fish, right? Swallow the meat, spit out the bone. But the Holy Spirit is sad. So I'm sitting here, someone has studied this Bible since the 80s on, on this particular subject as much as anything I've ever had. And, uh, and I'm here to tell you right now that I don't know if this is the start of the battle in Gog and Magog. And that's amazing. The reason why I say that is that I'm 50 something years old. And um, it's this microphone, man. It messes up. I don't know why. <laughs> it's been a long time since the 80s when we started this. And stuff always happened. We're like, no, it's not. No, 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 no. And now I'm like, could be. Could be. And um, do we know? I don't know. We just have to watch it and see. Because this, I, I will say this, that all players are involved. And even, you know, we read something like a prophecy of Gog and Magog. I know I'm get back to this in a minute. But, you know, Wednesday night, we have fun around here. We just, we're now going to build a campfire in the middle. Like we're just sitting around roasting marshmallows around a campfire. We just bring up stuff and talk about it. So, um, we... Um, the, 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 one, the one thing about this is we, we don't know. We have to watch it because we, 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 read, a, we read about a battle like that that, that is prophetic, that is, in, that is in the Bible. A lot of times we think it's just going to just boom, just happen. 
We don't know how long these things are going to escalate and how long it's going to take. I mean, you know, obviously the, the uh, you know, Russia and Ukraine, you were think, that thing just didn't happen overnight. I mean, you, you, you saw it building up, build up. You know, World War II, building up, building up. Vietnam, build, these things build up. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know if this, I know, I mean, it's, it's not full blown right now, obviously, or, or into it. But we do know is, is that we can, we can take prophecy as much as in Ezekiel 38 and 39, which, is, which, 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 which lays it out. And we, we do know is, is that it is beginning to get laid out. It's like if somebody in their 30s had a book, they could read a book about what World War II was going to be and how it was going to start. Where in 1938, they could say, uh-oh, this guy, this, this charismatic guy over here in, in Germany could be the guy that's playing a part in it. You understand what I'm saying? So we do have a book that they didn't have in the late 1930s before the World War II started out in the 40s. It's called the Bible. And because, well, why, why won't World War II? Because this right here has, it literally, directly has to do with Israel. In which the, the, the head honcho over there in Israel, said, in, in Iran says he's going to you know, obliviate um, Israel, which is not going to happen. Anyway, so what's your point? I mean, what's my point? My point is, yeah, be ready. Somebody says that would, that would do it. But, yeah, we have to see the Holy Spirit, and I'll teach you in this here as we go through the study, is that the Holy Spirit, he brings, he brings, back, he brings the word to light to us. So in other words, I can read the word. I'll be honest with you, there's a difference between somebody on late night TV or whatever going to take the Bible. Oh, this is the Bible. Let me read it and get nothing out of it. Somebody just got saved Sunday that could take the same word because the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of them, can now read it and see something totally different than they saw it. Why? Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. He, he, he illuminates the word of God. He makes it real. He makes it come alive. And so whenever, so it's very important to understand the work in the Holy Spirit, the con, con, convicting or the convincing of the Holy Spirit. I mean, knows that we talk about convicting, we think that's before we got saved, but we need the convicting power of the Holy Spirit to stay with us till Jesus comes or until we make it to heaven. Keep on convicting us, God. Completely, completely, completely keep on convincing us, Lord, about what the Scriptures is saying. Amen? So convince us, God, what, um, uh, what's going on. And I'm just bringing up Ezekiel 38 just because stuff like that is all, all out there. And, and people can get a lot. If you, want, if you really want to build up your, um, your podcast right now and get a lot of likes, get a lot of watches, just put something up. Uh, about Ezekiel 38 if you're in that vein people's going to start looking at it not everybody's right and someone's going to do it so we just need to stay focused stay on the word of God and ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and bring to light what it is going on in the scriptures that make any sense and we need it we need it we need to watch it that's the hour which we're living I mean I just, we don't, we're not scared of nobody it's, it's, it's nothing I still I still believe yeah the good news is, the bad news, if that's Ezekiel 38, Ezekiel 38, the battle of Ezekiel 38, is, is the battle of Gog, of, of Magog, is, it, 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 we don't know if it's going to happen right before the rapture or right after the rapture. You can put it anywhere else. You can put it on either, either side you want to. You can put it right before um, the rapture of the church, and it fits. You can put it right after the rapture of the church, and it fits. Very, very peculiar um, piece of prophecy there. Um, I have no preference whatsoever. I have, I have no, zero idea. I do believe the closer we get to it, we won't get it. What I do know, what I like to do, because um, I like what, I, I'm part of the belief also in the prophecy of, of Joel that in the last days I will pull my spirit out upon all flesh, which is what, which is what, um, what Peter prophesied, uh, what he spoke in Acts 2. So if that's going to happen, I do believe with all my heart that if we're that close that everybody is lining up and things are happening, and, I, and don't get me wrong, it could happen. It, it could take years. It could take months. It could take days. I don't know. Um, but I do believe with all my heart that the Spirit of God is going to move upon this planet in such a powerful way. See, the reason why these things are happening, it's important to hear the Holy Spirit just remind me of this. The reason why all these things happen about judgment on the nations is because God loves the nations. God loves the nations. 
He loves the he loves the Hindus who just emphatically worship in a false god of Hinduism. He loves the Muslim who is worshiping the false god of Allah. And I can go all the way down. He he loves the atheist who who, who worships what they think is nothing, but it takes faith to, to believe in nothing. He loves them. He loves them. Okay? We got it. So the things that he's doing is not just uh, for us to say, oh boy, let's hold hands. We get ready to go. <laughs> Come on, church. I mean, it's okay. It's good. But it's to get, as the Spirit of God is moving, it's to get the attentions of the nations. Turn your eyes to his word and get them to turn their heart to him. So the devil who so because so the devil who wants everybody in God's eyes they ain't gonna get anybody. Amen. He thought he had us. But look at us now. At church on Wednesday night. Are you kidding me? So that's conviction a little bit. On well, that paragraph anyway, I'll make a wild guess. We won't get too far through this tonight, but hey, we're doing all right. So we must depend on the Holy Spirit to convince people of these truths. We must depend on the Holy Spirit to convince people of these truths. I want to preach God's word. And I, I study show myself for proofs and I get, but who do I need, who do I need to take this word and it leaves my heart to, to, to pierce you guys' hearts and the people who listen? Holy Spirit. He can take words that, he can take words I say and just completely just, just manifest it and just make it do what only, only it can do. We may say that the, um, what the Word says on, on the issues, but it is the Holy Spirit who would do the convincing. He'll do it. Anyway, number two, let's look at this. He will guide us to all truth. John 16 and, um, John 16 and 13. John 16 and 13. Um, however, when, the, when He, the Spirit of truth, see, that's, there, see what's it? when you see Spirit of truth, that's a name. See that? That's a, that's a name of the Holy Spirit. So when we, so whenever He, Jesus says, after uh, go back, go to John sixteen and twelve. Let's see what it says. John sixteen. I tell many things to you, but but you cannot bear them now. Okay, now this is after He said about about a Spirit of God, a Holy Spirit coming. However, when He, the Spirit of Truth, why is His name called the Spirit of Truth? And let's stop again. What is truth? Jesus said it. Thy word is truth. So this is, so if you, if you really want truth, this is the truth. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit works so closely with the word, which is the truth, that wanting his name. Remember, the names in the Bible, like with God, he's, he's Jehovah Shalom, because he is the God of peace. He's Jehovah Rapha, because he is the God that heals us. So, so compound names, it, it, it not only just has to do with what it looks like it has to, it describes who he is god is a god of peace so he is jehovah shalom okay he is our provider so he is jehovah jireh our provider okay you get it the holy spirit he is a revealer of the truth so he is the spirit of truth so that's the spirit he is the spirit of truth so when he the holy spirit which is the, which which is the spirit of truth has come he would guide you. See, we read this, we think, spirit of truth. Wonder what that is. It must be a different spirit. No, no, this is it. This, this is it. So when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he would guide you to what? All truth. To all truth. He would guide you to all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will what? He will speak. See, Anyway, and, and he would tell you things to come. I love this scripture. Now, let's stop here and look at this for a second. Whenever he, Holy Spirit, this is Jesus talking, so in your Bible is in red. So, whenever he, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit has come. Remember, Jesus is still here. He's the paracletos of all of them. He's with him. He said, but I'm sending another comforter. He's going to come. And when he comes, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you to all truth. He will remind us, just like Jesus always reminded them, all they knew is Jesus was always with them. The Lord's never went to work, never did anything without Jesus telling them or them asking you, he'll take this out and you need to do it. 
This is how you need to raise your family. This is how you need how your marriage. This is how you need to do your finances. This is how you, this is how you need to pray. I mean, he goes through everything. So, so they're always with him, and now they're freaking out because he won't be there. He says, okay, that's okay. When he comes, the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you to all truth. He'll guide us to what this word says. He'll tell us to what God is saying. He'll guide this preacher on how we need to build this ministry. He'll guide that mother on how she needs to raise her kids. If you ask him, he'll tell you. He knows all truth. He will not speak on his own authority. Because remember, he is the Holy Spirit of God. His authority comes from, just like our authority, his authority comes from God the Father. And he speaks on an authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. Who's he hearing from? He's hearing from the Father. So the Holy Spirit of God who is in, and we can go in Romans and teach you this, the First Corinthians 2 and teach you this, that when the Holy Spirit, he's in, he, at the same time, remember, if he's anywhere, he's everywhere. And so he is, he is in, in the, cha- he can hear what God is thinking in his chamber about you. And while he hears it with one ear, he is, he is speaking to you as it, as it has to do with what you're getting ready to do and the plans that God has for you. And if what you're getting ready to do is going to divert you from what God has to you, then he will convict you. <laughs> well, maybe that's not right. Oh, man, I was going to do it, but I just don't know. Where's that coming from? I'm the Holy Spirit. Remember I taught you Sunday, you better watch it because, you know, Adam got himself into, play, that he, into the place where he was hearing from the enemy and he was hearing from God. Now, we're always on this side of heaven going to have to, going to, have to discern between who's the enemy and who's the, who's, who's, the, who's the father. But Jesus says, but my sheep know my voice. Jesus took a lot of, he said that, he took a lot of, he took a lot of pride in that. Right? But when I was raised up, I was raised up. We lived in a, had a subdivision in my, uh, in my granny's house. And there was, you know, back, remember back when kids used to go outside and play? Remember back then? Tell them my age again. <laughs> and go outside and there'd be, I mean, there'd be like, you know, everybody would just converged on whoever's house, you know, what, you know, get some kind of ball game or hide and seek or whatever it was, you know. We, you know, we had a four or five house um, the subdivision was like, was like round. You, you come in one way and you come out the other and you had a road and, and you kind of go in there. And um, anyway, what was always amazing was is that no matter what it was and who's, you know, as it started getting, you know, it started getting a little later, you, know, you, you hear the mamas or whoever's calling you. And it was amazing. You'd be, you know, it'd be 15 of us all over. You know, if it's hiding seat, we're hiding somewhere under bridges and ditches, you know, and all kinds of stuff. And you hear a mama voice. And we all knew as soon as we heard it, Whose, whose parents it was that was calling us? We sitting there, oh, ain't mine, I'm still playing. Come on, right? And then you say, you're having the best time, everything, this thing, you, you hear, I hear my grandmother call, I'm like, oh, you gotta be kidding. How'd I know it was her? I'm five houses in, I knew a voice. And we all could discern the difference between four different voices most of them female, most of them, you know, I mean, you know, some, what is it about you women? You, you, you can just pierce. <laughs> My granny would say, sure, what? <laughs> In the wood, which is reverberate. You want to jump? Y'all heard that before, haven't you? All young people are gone, man. Just as old folks up in here. We remember stuff like that. And we remember that. And I'll be honest with you, we did. And Lordy day, children, don't show up 20 minutes later saying you didn't hear. Oh. That's when you went in the yard and she made you pick out your own switch. And we got real late, she didn't have time. She'd take the fly swatter off the top of the refrigerator with fly guts on everything and just start pow, pow. I'm like, what the heck is that on my leg? It's so, is that a fly eye? What is that? <laughs> my New Yorker friends up here are like, ah, my fly's on. <laughs> That's 
whatever it was. Anyway, so my point was, my point is, right? Yes. So we need to hear, we, we, need, we need to hear from him. He guides us all truth and he says in his own authority, but whatever he hears, he would speak and he would tell you things to come. So if we're living an hour hearing all kinds of stuff that's going on. I mean, most, I mean, pro-illustrated, pro-Israeli rallies. I mean, uh, anything from that to anything to our daily, you know, just what we're dealing with on a daily basis, how it affects families is the abortion issue. Just, just whatever it is right now, guys, we have to really be hearing what the Holy Spirit, and he is speaking right now. We need to make sure we're hearing from him and make sure we're in the right place. Anyway, so I want to teach you this stuff so you'll know it and, um, and, and just, just, to, just to help us to better hear from the Lord in the days we're living. Amen? All right, that's a good place. Let's, let's stop on the fly guts and stuff and so we can really remember this night. It was a special night. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being our paracletos. We thank you for being our paraclete, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for being our attorney, being the one that, that comes alongside of us and helps us, Lord. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are a reminder of truth to us, Lord. You bring back truth regardless if it's a business decision, Lord, if it's a parenting decision, if it's, just a, if it's a ministry decision, if it's just a common sense everyday decision. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We just want to draw you closer to us. We want you to illuminate yourself to us in such a powerful way, Lord. We just want to be filled with your spirit. We want to walk in your glory. We want to walk with your understanding and clarity. I thank you for your word, God, and continue, Lord, to use this word to encourage us and to expand us as we do what you called us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, love you guys. Thank you. We'll see you Sunday, okay? Thank you for joining us today. We are so glad to connect with you. If you are new to HP and want to get more involved, I invite you to text 910-501-2005. Or you can download our church app and stay up to date on everything going on around here. I also want to tell you three ways you can give today. You can give through text. Text any amount to 84321. If you've never set that up, it only takes a moment. You can give right through your phone at any time. Second, you can give online through our website. Go to highestpraisechurch.com and click the giving tab. You can give right there online. Finally, you can give through mail. You can send in your gift to P.O. Box 1189, Shalote, North Carolina, 28459. And if you're looking for a way to plug in, to serve, or be a part of what's going on here at Highest Praise, join us for our next step class. It's the first Sunday of every month at 9 a.m. We are so glad you joined us today. God is not done with your life. If you need prayer, have any questions, you can reach us through social media or you can call our office at 910-754-4809. We love you, highest praise, and the best is now.